Hey hello everybody, my name is Coolblood and I'm bringing out this video of me talking about some board games and today I'll be doing a top 10 list, this list being the top 10 games that I want to record but either haven't yet or maybe I won't for various reasons and I'll talk about what those are in a second so let me go ahead and bring up the um, background music here. Okay, cool, let's go on. And I have a, t a list of 10, 10 technically. I say 10 technically because of course I went over the number of 10, but not by much. Um, and these are games that I, I, I want to record and I do have these in order from most likely to actually do a video recording all the way down to ones that I probably won't ever uh, do a full recording playthrough because like I, I would like these games to exist on the interwebs on YouTubes, um, but sadly they're not there. So without further ado, let's go and start with these games. Um, like, like I said, some of these games are ones that you will see me do playthroughs here in the future. Um, I just haven't got around to it and like I said, towards the end, probably not. So, start with the first one. The very first one is kind of cheating. Well, it's kind of cheating because it's going to be the Hexplort series. And I say series because I happened to be able to back Hexplort um, for uh, the newest one that they had come out. And um, I decided to just back kind of the base stuff that people already kind of confirmed that was good, as in like good and enjoyable. And that, this is all the uh, Hexplort that I have here. So it's not really much more to add to the table, but this is the um, Valley of the Dead King and the Valley of the Dead King's expansion, and then the Domain of Mira Noctis, and I do not have the expansion for that, but I do have Killix Madness, the campaign. The, the only thing to say about this one is that, um, yeah, I, I do want to do a video playthrough of this, this series. I have to kind of figure out how to record it, uh, which is kind of an issue with a few of these games that I'm going to be going through this list. But the main things that I like about this game is that from what I've played in my two playthroughs, full, two full playthroughs so far, uh, it's a very sprawling pen and paper experience and I'm really looking forward to seeing how the um, campaign book helps change things up because I hear that it adds a lot of variety and a lot of choices and kind of choose your own adventure style of things. But with that said, there, there's kind of, there's kind of a, I felt there was kind of a problem of a lot of random in places where I didn't think the random should have been. I think uh, there's another reviewer um, that said a similar thing that the random is in weird places like you kind of want the random in fights or you expect it in fights But the fights are pretty straightforward You know you do a thing and then your opponent does a thing whereas everything else is just kind of you roll dice and see what happens So that's kind of weird, but um, I do think between these two I have a good spread of the game and um, Yes, the game does have many moving parts which could be seen as a bad I see as a neutral But I feel like I can make it through you know, I've played <laughs> play some pretty complex complex systemed games on this channel before so one day i'll be doing a playthrough of at least the valley of the dead king just the base game but i do want to also try to do the campaign sometime in the future and definitely want to do a, a playthrough of domain of uh, mira noctis so the hexmore series is going to be the first one here so i'm most likely to actually record a video of this one but don't <laughs> don't hold your breath on that one for sure all right i have not planned out where i'm gonna put these games out there i <laughs> present them <laughs> cool all right, so next game on the list is going to be one that uh, that I think I think uh, kind of in the similar vein of Pax uh, Emancipation, because uh, I've already done a playthrough of Pax Emancipation. I don't know if it's up by the time you see this video. It might be. I don't know. But Freedom, the Underground Railroad. Uh, this game is one that's kind of um, it's, it's it's kind of more so telling a story about you know what it was like for the people who are um, who are railroad not railroad um, conductors on the Underground Railroad and they're trying to free uh, enslaved persons. Uh, this is specific in the United States uh, back in the time period when slavery was still a thing, uh, chattel slavery specifically. Um, and there's a few things about this game. One, I kind of, I kind of enjoyed the interesting card and action economy of the game. Cause like there's some cards that you can play, uh, and then you kind of you use your action points to kind of move around. And I kind of like that kind of play off of the, the mechanics. Like, like I understand the subject matter is pretty, pretty, you know, uh, pretty serious and pretty heavy. Uh, and some people might not see that as a plus. I, I see it as a plus. I like exploring these types of games to kind of hear the stories that they tell, or maybe, the, maybe they'll encouragement to research a thing or two, um, something I may have, may have not known. But that said, the the um, kind of the, the play between what you're trying to do and how you get your people or how you get people freed to uh, the freed areas. And while also you're trying to dodge, you know, the, the <laughs> trying to dodge the uh, slave patrol and everything else. Like, like it, it's, it's an interesting interplay is what I'm trying to say. And I have a lot of interest in that. So I think I would love to do a playthrough of this one. Um, one of the things holding me back right now is that the theme kind of requires me to do a little bit of prep 
um, as far as, you know, kind of researching a few things and just kind of making sure I have a good enough understanding to do it. Very similar to the one I did for Pax Emancipation, um, but that's a different story. So yeah, freedom on the Underground Railroad. I do look forward to tabling this for streaming or for recording soon. And by soon, I mean sometime in the future, but for right now, it has not been done yet. So moving on to the next one. The next one is going to be one that I am still on the fence on. Ugh. And that is going to be Shia Legends of a Drift System. So Shia Legends of a Drift System, and, and also I have these box bands on some of my games because they're huge and I don't want the tops to kind of fall because I keep them standing up. So my apologies if the box band is in the way, getting in the way of this beautiful artwork of this gorgeous game. Um, but yeah, She's Legends of the Drift System um, is a game that I enjoy playing a lot with friends. I enjoy playing a lot with people. Um, I'm not entirely convinced that the solo interplay is going to be all that fun because I have done a few solo playthroughs of this in the past. And from what I recall, it wasn't that exciting, or at least as I said, it's played multiplayer. So that's kind of one thing's holding me back on this one. But I do have a few extra modules from the community that I've um, in in integrated into my game and I will try I uh, will eventually try it out to kind of see how the campaign works. This is like a little campaign, like, you know, you do a few playthroughs to see how you do and you get like some lasting rewards. I just want to see how that works. So this this is likely to hit the um, the channel only because I do enjoy this game a lot. Like when my friends say, hey, uh, Cool Blue, let's go play Shia Legends of Justice. So I'm like, yes, please, let's play it. So so this is, this is definitely one of my favorite, um, favorite uh, I guess, open world sandbox style games like this. So I am looking forward to one day playing this, but currently I have not. So it has not hit the table. Cause like I said, most, mostly because I'm very skeptical of how the uh, NPCs, I don't, I don't think they'll be able to replace a player specifically. And that's kind of what it comes down to. All right, so next up on the list is one that's more of a darling for the wider board game community, that's Mage Knight. So I know that this is number four on the list and I want to explain for a second that it's, there's a very high chance that this will never ever see a playthrough on my channel, mainly because when it came to the time period I was getting to board games, Mage Knight was the newest thing. It, it was the, the darling of the town. And then also so was Shia to some degree. Some people were really raving about Shia. Um, and I decided that I wanted Shia over Mage Knight because I played both, I have both. And when I played Mage Knight, from what I remember, is like walking was very difficult. <laughs> And I was very annoyed at how complex and complicated it was. Although nowadays, now that I'm a little bit more mature in my board gaming, uh, ex board gaming experiences, I can probably appreciate a lot more with how restrictive the movement is, depending on when you do it and how you do it. But with that said, um, the navigation was was kind of a nightmare, and because of that, I kind of just said, eh. And the rules were very, you know, kind of a little dense. There was a lot to keep track of, a lot of bookkeeping. Nowadays, I'm pretty sure I can knock this game out uh, in like maybe three or four hours and, ha and have a blast. But I have not revisited this game in a long time, so it's higher on the list because I do want to revisit it. And I feel like when I revisit it, I'm gonna definitely do a playthrough of it since you know it's kind of the 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 thing that everybody who does solo board gaming on YouTube does. Um, is play at least one game of Mage Knight, so it's on the list. Um, but that said, um, I do want to be completely honest that if I have similar feelings, as in after I play it, if I have similar feelings to like, eh, this is a little bit more cumbersome than I want it to be, then I'll probably not table it. That said, I do think that this has a better, or this does have a better chance of being much more intriguing, in my opinion, than Shia solo. Despite the fact that I prefer Shia over this game, I think that this game will have a much more compelling solo component because it's kind of been in that direction, designed in that direction, where she is more of a multiplayer first, NPCs later type thing. Oh, also, I do want to um, clarify with Shia, um, so going back to Shia for a second, um, I do want to clarify, if you are interested in getting Shia Legends of Your System, uh, this game is really bad without the expansion. If you have the expansion, Embers, uh, I think it's Embers of a Forsaken Sun, Embers of a Forsaken Star, something like that. That expansion is absolutely necessary for this game to be good, or any good in my opinion. So if you get the base game Shia without that expansion, then try to try to go look up what the rules are for the expansion and apply those to this game. Otherwise, this game is not that enjoyable. <laughs> okay. And then the main reason why is because the expansion adds some mitigating factors to the dice rolls. So that, that really helps out. It goes a long way to making the game, in my opinion, go from like a 6 to like a 9 for me personally. Uh, out of 10. 
All right, next one is gonna be um, Endless Winter. So Endless Winter, the problem with this game for me is that it's quite the table hog. I think with the new technology that I have now, I can actually get this one to be tabled, but Endless Winter is kind of a, um, uh, kind of in the deck building or hand building. It's more hand building or deck building, I don't know. I think it's more like a hand management deck building, but kind of like a hodgepodge of mechanics. And definitely when I, when I got it, which is kind of like at the peak of its, uh, of the hype around it um when i when i happened to get my hands on it uh thanks to a friend um i was able to sit down and play like a test game of it with him and i don't remember anything about that game i don't remember if i liked it i don't remember if i hated it i, I don't remember anything i know it's still on my shelf that's all i know <laughs> so unfortunately i can't say i had a very memorable experience with it initially but i was also kind of ranting and raving over lost ruins or arnak which would be on this list but lost ruins arnak i don't know it's, it, like i did a playthrough it, it's it's a long story i'm not gonna talk about it <laughs> So, uh, Endless Winter is definitely a game that um, I do want to hit the table. It has a really huge footprint. And with the current technology that I have regarding my cameras, I feel like I can do it because I now have three cameras instead of just one. Um, so we'll, we'll see We'll see if I can do this in the future. But for right now, uh, this is gonna be on the list at number five. So next one is going to be a two for one because one of these is kind of not really a solo game anyway. And as you know, on my channel, I do mostly solo playthroughs, but I do want to get some friends on to do a playthrough of this. So I, I, might, I just might manage to do that. So assuming that I'm gonna do a gameplay with friends, Clash of Cultures is one that I really, really, really want to do a playthrough of. It is a little bit further along the list at number six down here, because I mean, it's gonna be a very long game. I need to get some people to join. I feel like I need to have at least three players. I think you can play four max. I don't know if I wanna do a max player game, like that's gonna take too long um but that all goes along with say there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of mitigating factors as to what's keeping me from actually coordinating a playthrough of this because um it's a civ building game uh as in like you're kind of building your civilization you're expanding you're exploring you're you're expanding you're exploring you're exploiting the lands you're kind of trying to exterminate your uh, your opponents very cool very pretty nice production has 350 miniatures side note i do not like games with miniatures <laughs> I try to avoid games with miniatures. I'm a huge fan of small games, and because I'm a huge fan of small games, I prefer games with like you know cardboard cutouts representations of the things. So this one, this is the the edition I got. The monumental edition had everything, and I got the miniatures. So I was like, all right, whatever. I have a few games with miniatures, but that goes along with to say that this game is uh, on the side because um, it's just a civ building game, but it's more of a multiplayer game. So it's going to be a little bit harder to actually table for for my my uh, style of videos that I do on my channel. And then also, um, yeah, the, the, there is, I think there's a solo bot mode that somebody's made on Board Game Geek. Um, I haven't tested it, so I guess I'll test that sometime in the future. <laughs> but I'm, I'm not really um, not really sure if it's gonna be as, in, as uh, encouraging as the multiplayer game has been for me so far in my two playthroughs. All right, the next game, uh, which is also number six, because just in case, we're only focusing on solo only games or solo solo soloable games out of the box. Lands of Galazar is on this list because <laughs> this game is gonna be very difficult for me to table because I'm just gonna be honest with you. Between Sleeping Gods and Lands of Galazar, I know Lands of Galazar has made my list in previous times for for um, playing ten times in a row. But I would like to emphasize that Lands of Galazar, there's not much game there. It's more storytelling, more immersive storytelling. I feel like this would be great to play with some of my friends who are more into D&D &D and not really into the tabletop board game side of things or the niche board game side of things. This would be great for them because it's kind of, you're really just telling story, exploring story, doing skill checks and kind of it being an adventurer, you know? Um, but I don't think there's enough kind of game mechanics with air quotes for this one for me to be as enjoyable. And like I said, comparing it directly to a game like Sleeping Gods. Sleeping Gods' is game mechanic comes from the fact that you have to manage your crew's life. Uh, you also have to manage your, your fighting. When you're fighting, you, try, you have to manage like who's doing what and when they're doing it. You have to manage your cards. There's a lot of, a lot of hand management, crew management, card management stuff for Sleeping Gods. Whereas Lands of Galzar, it's like literally you take that, you strip it all out and just keep only the story stuff and you do like the occasional skill check and that's Lands of Galazar, which is not a bad thing. I want to emphasize, it's actually a good thing because this means that there's a few different ways you can get into the whole narrative board gaming side of things. But I do want to emphasize that for me, this one's on my list because, I mean, I feel like I might fall asleep while playing it um, on the live stream. 
Especially considering that I have Sleeping Gods already. And also I have Sleeping Gods, uh, the Forbidden Skies coming soon. Forbidden Skies? Distant Skies, sorry. Distant Skies coming soon, so. Um, yeah, Lands of Galzor is the, al the alternative number six. So technically there's 11 games on this list. If you want to uh, keep my early justification of keeping all of the hex ports together. Okay, but enough about that one. Move on to number... Oh man, number seven. Ah, I didn't pull out the shelf. One second. Uh, number seven is PAX Premier. Let me go grab it. <laughs> I was totally prepared for this. One second. There we go. All right, number seven is PAX Premier. And the thing with PAX Premier is that I still don't know how to play this game. Um, I really still don't know how to play this game, and I'm a little bit sad because <laughs> I know so many people love this game. So many people, this is like a darling game for a lot of people. This is like, this is the game that inspired Root. Okay, maybe not inspired Root, but Cole Worley um, made this game before Root was made. And a lot of people said that there, or he said, I should say, that there were some inspirations from this game that he put into Root. I don't know what those inspirations are, but as somebody who's played Root, because I have a friend who's absolutely obsessed with Root, um, having played Root at least four times here my, my entire board game life, um, I will say that I'm a little bit excited to kind of jump into this one. There is a solo mode and a solo automaton. I don't know if the solo automaton is going to be anything good to deal with. Uh, I've played John Company. I've done a video of John Company. Um, I enjoy John Company multiplayer, but when I play John Company solo, it's just not, it's just not, not my thing. And like, also I, I do, I do love the, like the art. Like this is... I mean, I know it's very small, and compared to some of the other artwork, there's a lot of ex like really cool and exquisite artwork on these board games. But like this one in particular, I just love that title. It just, it just looks, it pops, you know? Anyway, all right. So yeah, so that one's gonna be that one. So I need to learn the rules for this one. And also, like I said, I'm not, yeah, if, if the John Company Automaton is anything to be, uh, to compare it to, I don't have high hopes for this one being one that I would actually enjoy. <laughs> so that's why it's so low on the list. It's number seven. All right, number eight on the list is going to be Legendary, Marvel Legendary, Marvel Legendary Heroes. I've done a video in the past about my Legend Marvel Legendary collection. Um, I have nearly all of the hero stuff except for the Marvel Studio stuff. And um, I think I finally went back and got some of the villain stuff. I want to get the villain stuff, but it's hard. It's really hard to get the villain's core box. But one day I'll get that. I don't know. Just from like a collecting perspective. But... I do have nearly every single expansion for this one, except for the Marvel Studio stuff. I do actively avoid those ones from the big box to the small box stuff. So I have, starting with, uh, what was the first expansion? It's over there on my shelf. I can't see it from here. But I had the, the latest one, which has Blade and um, some other people. So yeah, so there's a lot of stuff in this one though. Like there's a lot of different heroes, a lot of different combinations. And I do want to play through the campaign. There's been a few different campaign mo modes that people have made of Marvel Legendary. And because I have nearly all the stuff, I really want to play with the stuff that I have. The problem that I have with Marvel Legendary though, is that yes, you have a lot of combinations, you have a lot of heroes, but you also have a lot of cleanup, <laughs> which is a nightmare. Uh, and then you also have a lot of keywords, which is also frustrating. I really, really, really wish Upper Deck would actually start recycling old keywords but for some reason they want to every single every single new expansion comes out it never fails there's at least three new keywords and given that this game has been out for 10 years uh, has a has a 10 year track record um and it's still come out new new mini expansions and i don't think it's come out any big box expansions anytime soon but definitely new mini expansions or smaller box expansions that means that there's like 10 years worth of keywords for the game and it's like oh my gosh there's so many keywords it's like over a hundred different keywords. It's really frustrating. Okay, so enough about that one. So um, it'll it'll one day hit the table, maybe, but it's really low on the list because I don't have much hope for it. Um, I just don't foresee myself actually wanting to clean up that game. All right, now we're getting to the last two. High Frontier is number nine. So High Frontier for All, I just got this one um, literally like four days ago. So literally just got this relative to the time that I'm recording this video, um, but uh, five, five days ago, sorry. Um, but this game, it can play solo, allegedly. Um, I've heard rumors, I've heard rumors that the solo mode is is kind of, um, I think it's like, uh, I mean, I forgot the name of it. Okay, maybe it sits in the back. Oh gosh, this is quite heavy. 
Uh, eh, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I've heard the solo mode has a lot of um, has a lot of random, has a lot of RNG to it, which I guess you kind of need for a solo game to be effective. And I want to emphasize that there's a lot of board games that I play, like Hexplored, um, Final Girl, all this other stuff that has a lot of random. And random is definitely needed for a solo experience to be enjoyable. So I do agree. However, um, if it's to the point where it's kind of like, you know, just flip the top four cards and if they're not what you need, then you just lost the game. Then it's like, eh, why bother playing this? So High Frontier, I definitely want to, I, def I definitely want to table. I definitely want to play with my friends too, because um, I, just, I just love the fact that the map is just, just this massive, massive showing of space and like there's all these lines going around and you can do all the space stuff and you can do like auctioning for your parts and you're trying to fly to a place and come back. And it, it's just so fascinating. Like, I just love the science that went into this. Um, one of the neutral things for some people, I mean, it, it's, it's kind of, <laughs> I, I don't know, the, the, the best way to say this is that it, it seems like a game that has more steps involved just because it could have more steps involved. Also, also there, there's an ad fact, I mean, I, I'm relatively neutral on this one, but this one's by Phil Eklund as well. Um, as I said in the past, I try to give a disclaimer every time I bring up a Phil Eklund game, is that Phil Eklund's involved, so some people don't like his views and his political views, but I'm able to separate the artist from the art, so on and so forth. But, um, I do acknowledge that, um, yeah, he has some problematic views on topics, especially in our current political environment. Um, not that he said those currently, it's just in the past he said those. Anyway, moving on. Um, but yeah, but it's, it's this very, like, cool space game, so like, I, I like that idea. But I'm worried if this is going to be like kind of overly complicated just because it could be rather than something more straightforward and simple. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to tabling this, uh, at least in my private board game playing. But uh, if I can do a live stream of it or do a video recording of it, I'll try. But it's pretty low on the list for a reason. So I wouldn't get my hopes up. And the final game, the final game on this list, and we're making good progress here, is... Mr. President, so for some reason, for some reason, I decided to go purchase this game. And just to clarify, um, hype is a real thing. And I would like to acknowledge that, yes, part of it was hype. But also, this is kind of a game that I've been talking about. Like, you can check my Board Game Geek history, um, Cool Blue, C-U-L-B-O-U, on Board Game Geek. I made a forum post in 2021 or 2020, um, basically saying, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we did like some board game to where we take the presidential election for 2020 and we made it a board game and that was like that was like at the height of the pandemic that was like at the height of all the you know the former president of the united states uh donald trump all his nonsense was going on and you know of course <laughs> without getting too involved with the politics of the day i'm just saying things are happening today because of what happened in the past but i thought it'd be a really cool idea and this game kind of came out and it was literally that exactly. I was like, oh my gosh, I definitely want to play this game because it's, it's that thing, it's that idea that I had. I just want to see what it would be like to play that. And yeah, it's a very sprawling game. Uh, it goes from 2001 to 2020. So you can play yourself as a United States president for four years and four year increments. Um, it is a huge game. It, it is a huge game. And when I say huge, I mean physically huge. I mean time commitment huge and like choice decision huge, kind of a grand scheme huge. This is like, this is like you're, you're playing like, um, uh, this, this is a very huge game. I don't, I don't know how, how else to explain like how big this game is. Um, it's also a pretty, pretty thick box, thick with two C's here. Um, it has a lot of stuff in it and it has a lot of chits and it's really cool. It, it's basically like a war game, but with politics. I don't know how, how best to explain it. I'm just going to open this one because it has all this here. But uh, one of the things that I kind of put as a negative for this game is that this game is definitely um, charts the board game. So there's a lot of charts that you have to kind of look through and look up. And it's also, I mean, I, I think it's a plus for the game, but also a minus in retrospect. The fact that there's a turn flip, uh, turn sequence flip book that essentially whenever I play this game, and to be fair, I've only played um, half of one year in this game and that took me about uh six hours and granted i was still learning looking up rules and trying to figure out what's going on also i had to take breaks in between because i was doing work and stuff you know life was happening but it took me about six hours to get through half of the first year um and that's between learning looking up videos looking through a flipbook trying to figure out what does this mean what does that mean and nowadays if i if i sat down and did a full like you know focus playthrough i can definitely get through at least the first year within maybe two to three hours and that's the first year, for, to clarify, the United States president lasts for four years, or has a term that lasts for four years, and this game, they take through four years. So if one year lasts about two to three hours, the second year, might you might be able to do it in two, third and fourth, 
you, so you're looking at eight hours for just like a full term as a president. If you're trying to do a second term, then you're looking at another eight hours on top of that, uh, if we're being idealistic here. So what I'm trying to say is that this game is like a massive commitment and for what it is, I don't know if that commitment is really all that worth it, to be honest with you. Um, it, it's, it's kind of a shame because I do enjoy it and I think that if or when this game becomes digitized, hopefully when and not an if, like as, as in like this digital app version of it, I'm gonna play the crap out of it. But for right now, because I have to do all the manual work of looking up the tables and trying to figure out what does the enemy do, what does the ally do, you know, whose action is it anyway type situation, it's, it's very demanding of what I have to do. Very similar to how I feel about John Company um, solo mode. I feel the same way about this one to where I had to do a lot of input to make it work. And when it works, it's beautiful, it's great, it flourishes, it's like, it kind of blossoms into this, into this beautiful experience. But then when I'm sitting down and playing, it's like, ah, I have to do what? Oh my gosh, I have to get up and go and figure out what China's doing. All right, now I have to get up and go figure out what the UK is doing. All right, now I have to walk over here. I have to literally walk around my table to go back over here to figure out, you know, who's, who, who's, who's making nukes now. And I have to walk back over there because Russia decided to interrupt and do something. And I have to walk back over here. It's, it's... <laughs> <laughs> this game is huge. I don't know what else to say. So I, th I think this game might be great if I can get a friend or two to play with me on the live stream. But for right now, it's at the bottom of the list because it is the least likely to actually see play. I really want to. I really, really, really want to. But it's it's like, I, I don't know. It, it's for all the things that I just said. It's one of those things. Also, there there is a little bit of determin deterministicness of the game, um, which I guess I guess is kind of kind of par for the course with solo games um to where you know no matter like you can make all the correct decisions with air quotes but then the game will just continue to smack you in the face and that's just kind of how it is and i guess that's kind of how it is to be the, the president of the united states so there you go all right cool so that's gonna be it for the list of, that's gonna be it for the game just going through the list just to give a quick review uh, we started with explore it actually uh, fine i'll just bring them all into the table here we start off with explore it oh my gosh oh, we're not gonna have enough room and we're gonna make this as obnoxious as possible, aren't we? And then we moved on to Freedom. Blah. There we go. Freedom, the Underground Railroad. And we're just gonna keep this down here because it's gonna be last. Oh my gosh. And then Chia. Oh, we're not gonna have enough space, y'all. <laughs> I don't know whose genius idea this was to like bring all the games on the table. Me. Points to self. It was me. Of course, we have Mage Knight. Um, what was the next one? Endless Winter. Oh, jeez. All right, and I think we're out of space on the table. All right, cool, so we'll stop there. <laughs> Mr. President at the bottom, there you go. There's our screenshot, there's our thumbnail. That looks great. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the video there. Um, yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you all enjoyed it. And oh, oh, before I go, before I do go, let me know what you guys think of some of these games. Let me know what you guys think of some games that you would like to see tabled, that you would like to see me play. Um, I probably, Especially if it's not in my particular interest of genre, I probably will say no. But, you know, I'm, I'm always looking for ideas of games to check out and games to look at. Um, to clarify, war game, war gaming in general, is definitely not quite up my alley. I will sit down and play Twilight, uh, Twilight Struggle, but that's not quite a war game. But that's about, like, you know, Mr. President and Twilight Struggle are probably as far as I go into the war game side, but take that how you will. Um, anyway, so, thank you all very much for watching. Hope you all enjoyed it, and as always, I will see you all whenever.